completely gone. Okay, let's start again from the beginning. Hello, I'm Nye from Finale Guitar in Sheffield. Um, today you join me in my shop. Sorry it's a little bit of a mess because I've spent all day moving things around, taking photographs of new stock. I've got loads of um, ukuleles and brand new instruments and things that I've got to take photographs of to uh, sell them online. Um, the shop is actually officially open now as well if anyone's near Sheffield. It's 1 till 5, uh, Monday to Friday. So pop in and say hello. It'd be nice to meet you or see you again if uh, if you've been here before. Um, Yvonne was my first customer, so thank you to Yvonne for, for coming in. That was really nice. Um, yeah, anyway, the subject of uh, today's video is partial capoing. And this is thanks to... Um, a lady called Sally who sent me an email a little while back saying could I work out an impossible song for her. It took me absolutely ages to work it out because it was in a really confusing time signature. Um, it was Kate Rusby if anyone's familiar with her. But anyway she showed me a thing. She said I use this little partial capo and um, it means that I can play standard shapes but it sounds like dadgad. And I said oh that's clever I've not really thought about doing that before. So I've ordered myself one of those and I'm going to make a video about different techniques you can um, make use of with one of those but those little capos are only sold by two main companies and they cost about 20 quid and uh, I know everybody out there has probably got one of these a standard capo so I had to think about some ways you could play with one of these and use it for partial capoing and I want to show you some of my favorite ones that I've discovered there are a few that I used to use anyway and there's a few more that I've come up with especially for this video which hopefully you'll have some fun with Ah, oh, that's good. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. I miss having it, to be fair, because I was enjoying playing it in the shop as well. But uh, but this one's very nice too. Uh, but yeah, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, diddly diddly dee. So, um, yeah, the kind of magic of these partial capo tunings comes from the fact that you've got like a low bass note which fills out the bottom end. And then some nice high tinkly chords up the top which kind of make it all atmospheric and ethereal. So the very first one I want to show you is if you get your capo and you put it on the 7th fret so that it's only just touching the bottom A string so the E string is still open and that E string needs plenty of room to vibrate. You will find with your standard spring loaded capo and most guitars you'll be able to do this. You'd probably be able to do even the top four strings if you wanted to. And I'll show you some things you can do with that in a minute as well. But uh, yeah, so if you cover up the top five strings on the seventh fret, this is really, really useful for playing along with any tune in E minor. So E Dorian or E Aeolian. Um, because what you do now is play A minor shapes, but you've got your big ringing E note under it. So you can get some really nice things like this kind of thing. <laughs> huge bass note under it all. That kind of thing. So this is really nice, um, almost infinitely variable in its dynamics because of the combination of the low and high notes. Um, and yeah, I'll show you some chord shapes for this as well. So if you're playing in E minor, you can get round pretty much all of the chords in E Dorian and E Aeolian. We'll start with E Dorian because it's more common. Um, you can do pretty much all the chords with just two fingers. So if you start out with like an A minor 7 shape, except that now it's all the way up here. Um, that's like that. Then you go to um, what I might call G slash B in most videos. Um, so it's middle finger on the ninth fret of the um, A string or two frets above your capo and ring finger on the uh, tenth fret of the B string. That's a substitute for your second chord which would be a B minor but now it's this. Then if you play a C major shape that gives you... Ah, when I talk about these chords by the way at the moment I'm talking about them as if they're in A minor. So that's A minor substitute for B minor, C major. Of 
course we're actually we've transposed them so we're actually in E minor but I'm going to talk about the shapes that they look like because that makes life easier I think <laughs> that's your C major for D you can either slide that up two frets which sounds really nice all the way up here or you can just play D or you can play D and miss the middle finger off it which sounds nice in this tuning as I call it now, this out of tuning. Um, then for what would be E minor, um, you can just put one finger there on the ninth fret of the A string, or you can add your index finger there and try and basically extend the capo onto the bottom string by adding the index finger. But that is quite a stretch. Um, that is one little limitation of this way of playing things sadly but um, it can be done and then then it would be D with a thumb if you were playing an A minor so you can do D with a thumb if you want or if you want to do just the two finger version it's just those two like that rock and roll fingers um, put your middle finger on the um, ninth fret of the bottom string and then put your ring finger on the ninth fret of the G string, and that gives you that. And then the very last chord would be G. You can play G if you want, or if you want the two finger version, you take the last one that you had, you slide it up one fret, and you move the ring finger up one extra fret. And that gives you this, which is a really nice substitute for what is actually a D chord but it replaces the kind of G shape. Um, so if I play through that whole chord scale, I'll go all the way up. So uh, a, a minor or A minor 7 to start with. Then this shape, which is like a, like a G slash B shape. Um, then a C. Uh, then slide your C up two frets. This one, where you've got your um, ring finger on two frets above the capo on the A string and your index finger kind of extending the capo, that's your actually a B minor chord. Then two fingers, oh that's not right, uh, I like that. So ninth fret on the bottom string and ninth fret on the G string. Then slide that up one, slide the ring finger up an extra finger, and that's your last chord, and then you're back where you started. So yeah, that's one thing to play about with. Um, that's probably my favourite use for this partial capo technique, which is why I started out with it. Um, and you will find as well, if you think about shapes that you've discovered in the key of A minor, try moving them up here. But also, when you've got these higher tinkly notes, um, if you play a wrong note high up, it clashes less. So you could be a lot more experimental with chord shapes that wouldn't necessarily work further down or wouldn't sound very nice. Um, will sound more kind of atmospheric up here and, and they'll work better. So like that thing of sliding the C up, I wouldn't very often do that in the key of A minor, but I do it all the time in the key of E minor up here because the extra notes sound more ethereal <laughs> when you're all the way up the neck. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. Does anyone have any questions on that before I move on to the next one? Ah, just a, a quick one by the way, while I'm on the subject of partial capoing the 7th fret, um, I used this technique in an arrangement I wrote, which is in a book. Um, a book which you can buy either as an e-book or as a paperback, and if you do wish to buy that book, you can do so at the link which I've just posted in the comments. 
So uh, yeah, have a look at that if you're interested in some tune arrangements. Um, it was in my tune arrangement for Sean Ryan's, which goes something like... Um, since I played it. something like that. Would finger picking be cool? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's great for finger picking as well because finger picking kind of sounds tinkly anyway, so this really goes with that. Um, stuff in it it sounds really good yeah right let's move on next one um if you take the same principle as that and you just move the capo down two frets put your guitar in drop d um that gives you a whole range of different d keys that you can do um the first one is using all the exact same things as for the last one except the shapes are slightly different because you're in drop D, you can do D minor. So for D Dorian or D Aeolian, you can do A minor type shapes. So things like... you through the chords because these are slightly different because of the change of tuning so I'll go down the chord scale the first couple are going to be the same um, starting with A minor go to G using the G shape that you use in drop D which you can find this is the slidable shape that I talk about in my drop D video which I made a while ago uh, can't see strumming hand oh sorry I'll, uh, I'll pan down a bit is um, a bit lower yeah cool um, so that's your G shape then depending if you're Dorian or Aeolian you've got either that one or that one um, that's the Dorian one that's the Aeolian one and then E minor something like that except that now because of the capo it's actually A minor so that gives you this really nice chord scale going down A minor 7 with the big beefy root note. Then G. Then this one's called D slash F sharp. Or F if you want the Aeolian sound. And then E minor is just two fingers like that. So yeah. Except that in the real world they're actually D minor... C, um, G slash B, B, and A minor. Oh, B flat, sorry, B flat and A minor. Yeah. Um, and the 
yeah. other half of the chord scale is the same as it was in E minor, so A minor, um, G slash B, C, D. <laughs> that was a jazzy one there, wasn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do um, with the capo on the fifth fret, which is really nice, is um, play along with tunes in D major in drop D by using A major type shapes. So if you start out with, um, I find A major seven is easier to finger, which is why I tend to use it more than A. A up here is very squished, especially if you've got big chunky fingers. Um, so if you play A major seven, that's much nicer and easier to play. So if you've got like a kind of light airy tune in D major, this is a good candidate. A major 7 partial capo on the 5th fret. Then um, this one, which is the shape of B minor 7. So it's fairly easy to play, it's just three fingers. And you can actually do it with two if you just do it like that. So that version is just your middle finger on the A string, um, two frets above the capo, so on the ninth fret, and your third finger on the G string on the ninth fret as well. And then if you slide that up to two frets, you get the third shape, just add your index finger on um, the seventh fret, which is two above the capo on the D string. Like that. Then I like to use D major seven because it's easy to play. Uh, just a little mini bar Like that, that's my four chord and for the five chord you have to play E major the way you would play it in drop D So it's um, those two rock and roll fingers bottom two strings on the ninth fret and then you add your um, index finger uh, one fret above the capo on the G string so that gives you That and then in standard dadgad fashion, you slide that up two frets to give you that, and then move that index finger down one. That gives you your uh, sixth chord. And if you want to as well, you can play a seventh chord by um, the seventh chord in the scale by uh, moving up to the eleventh fret with your middle finger, and your index finger goes on the um, ninth fret of the G string and then that gives you that as a kind of substitute for chord 7 which is quite nice so all together that gives you this lovely chord scale for tunes in D major and it goes like this major is probably the most common key in folk music I'll show you another thing you can do for an even tinklier D major if you put your capo back on the um, seventh fret then play G major type chord shapes but just always miss off whichever finger should be on the bottom string so if you play country G as I call it which is that shape all the way up here and then change to country C and then a normal D chord you can get all these nice kind of D majory things that way as well always with this big ringing bass note again from the D string um, if you want a complete chord scale for that one just look up the video I did a while ago, uh, I think it's from the weekend before last, in which I cover a G major chord scale for easy chord changes. That's something like this. Um, um, 
So it's from G up to D from, from those shapes will be the same for this. And then for E minor you're going to need two fingers because you're in drop D. So bottom two strings on the ninth fret. And if you want a chord seven as well, then you can just take that shape, slide it up two frets, take the middle finger off, so you've just got, sorry, take the ring finger off, so you've just got your middle finger on the 11th fret of the bottom string, and add your index finger on um, two frets above the capo on the G string. And that's your chord seven. So all together, G major, kind of A minor, G slash B, country C, D major, E minor with two fingers, and then this kind of chord 70 thing, <laughs> and then you're back to G. So that could be used to great effect for any tune in G major really. Um, these in your book? No, I'm afraid Jack, these are not in my book. These are um, things that I considered too complicated to put in the book. Um, the, the aim with the book when I wrote it was kind of to um, give people a good enough grasp of the theory that they could work out the rest of it themselves. Um, I did throw in a lot of gratuitous jazz chords because I enjoyed them and I thought giving people some examples of those would um, maybe give them some good ideas of um, the kind of theory ideas that they could apply to other modes and in other keys and stuff like that and ways they could work out their own chord shapes that would be more interesting than the standard ones you hear people playing. Um, but I I didn't do any of the extra techniques like this or um, um, I didn't really touch on alternate tunings or anything like that. I do plan to write more books in a similar vein but at the moment Obviously, the shop's taken up a lot of time. I've recently written a book about chord inversions, which will be out, hopefully, um, I'd like to say by Christmas, but that's not realistic. I doubt it'll be out by Christmas. Um, it'll be out sometime early next year. And then after that, maybe I'll do one about just further... Maybe I'll do a second a second version of, of the first book with more, more ideas in it. Um, I do also want to do a second edition of that book as well, because... A lot of things that I said in it, I've now discovered through teaching it for several years that there are better ways of explaining. Um, particularly the the Dorian and Ionian mode and how we treat them harmonically. That's the sort of I looked at it from a quite an old-fashioned perspective, and I should have done it in a more modern way, and then looked backwards, I suppose. But anyway, so yeah, there will be a second edition of that coming out next summer. Um, the Chord Inversions book hopefully will be out early spring and then maybe after I've finished those I'll uh, have a look at writing another one about stuff like this and weird things you can do with capos and stuff like that. Um, there will be though um, a full video about partial capoing using partial actual partial capos and then using those in conjunction with normal capos like this. That's coming out in two weekends time. Um, so yeah that'll be something interesting to recap this stuff with. Hopefully that'll help you out a bit. Um, what else did I want to talk about? There's a few other good ones you can do. Um, I did make a list. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Oh, let's have a look at um, a funny one for A major, which... Yeah, this A major-y one, it'll only work if you're using a capo of this kind of design 
with a spring loaded one with quite a long bottom arm because what you need to do is only capo the top four strings on the um, fifth fret and no worries <laughs> and the reason that I'm doing only the top four is because I'm going to be using this in A major um, I want my A root note and I want an E root note for the fifth and I can do that like this so uh, if you haven't got one of these spring loaded ones if you've got one of the old school metal ones you can probably do five strings at a time but you'll probably struggle to do four um, if you do want to buy one of these, again, finaleguitar.co.uk forward slash shop. Um, I'll put a link in the comments as well, why not? Just in case anybody wants one. There you go. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, fourth, uh, fifth fret, top four strings. So if you play kind of E major shapes but missing the bottom two strings now and just think carefully about what the root notes are, you can get these really nice kind of A shapes. So I'll, I'll give you a little example of some stuff you can do and then I'll show you what I'm actually doing. So, um... to whistle and play at the same time. quite a nice one um, and as well as that you can do um yeah. as I say it doesn't really work so well doing four strings with uh, with one capo but you can be done you just got to be a bit creative with your capo application kinds of things. So there's two things there. The first thing was basically E major but missing that finger and then I was switching to um, like um, an E sus4 I suppose you'd call it. Basically if you play those two fingers for your E major chord, so middle finger on the um, on the G string and index finger on, sorry middle finger on the D string and index finger on the G string then you can add that finger to kind of suspend that chord, which sounds like you've switched to chord four, even though actually you haven't. So that's my chord one, and this is chord one, but sus four, so it doesn't sound much like chord one, it sounds more like chord four. And I'm gonna switch between those two a lot to sound like playing chord one and chord four. Then for what is effectively, so what is replacing B minor, the second chord in A minor, is this, which is um, a kind of jazzy B minor 7 shape that I've shown you before, except that now you're doing it with a capo on. And then when you play this little triangle with your index finger on the 7th fret, sorry, your middle finger on the 7th fret, your index finger on the 6th fret of the uh, D string, and your ring finger on the 7th fret of the G string, you can then play all the strings and that gives you a really nice um, kind of E7 chord but with an A at the top of it, which is quite, quite cool. So yeah, so that's um, the chords I would commonly use doing this is E, e well an E shape which is A, um, 
add that extra finger on as a substitute for, for a D chord. And then add that finger down there to be a substitute for chord two. And then my little triangle for E7. Um, E7 with an A in it, so it's E11 really, isn't it? But whatever, the names aren't really that important, are they? The other one that's really nice is A's related minor is F sharp minor. You can play that now as a little triangle up here. So middle finger on the ninth fret of the A string, index finger on the seventh fret of the D string, uh, ring finger on the ninth fret of the G string, and that gives you that for a substitute for your F sharp minor chord. Yeah. So as you can see, um, my capo does not want to play ball today. Um, that particular one with the four strings works better with a partial, an actual partial capo. Um, if you are thinking of getting a partial capo, I'll post a link as well to the ones that are the best. Um, they're the sh the Shub ones are the best. The Quick Change ones are okay. Um, in fact, the, the Kaiser make a Quick Change one, which is also good. But if you manage to find a Quick Change partial capo, there's very few cheap manufacturers making them, and so they're mostly not very good. So my recommendation would be either the Shub one or the Kaiser one. And I'll put a link on here to the the Shub one because they're, they're the, the kind of popular ones. These particular ones do three strings at a time. Um, and I'll be, as I say, I'll be covering some, uh, some cool techniques for those specifically um, in the weekend after next video. So there's, there's a link if you want to get one of those. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for this. Um, just generally, there's lots more um, keys in which you can use these, these partial capo techniques. As you see with my bouncing capo, it works the best with the ones that are just using um, four strings, uh, five strings rather, covered by the capo. Um, four strings gets a bit its hold on the guitar gets a little bit tenuous <laughs> but if you think about any key that you commonly play in just think about what other key transposed how many frets it would be and then consider whether there's any way you can get open strings to be notes that are useful in that key so if you were thinking about A major for example um, a major is a good one because you've got an A root note and an E root note on open strings. So um, you could think, what other keys do I feel comfortable switching between the shapes in? So maybe D major springs to mind. So how far is it from D up to A? You've got D. Oh, I can show you on here, actually. I've got an actual keyboard. Wait a minute. Um, you've got D. One fret up would be D sharp, two frets up would be E, another fret would be F, um, another one would be F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So that is one fret, two fret, three frets, four frets, five frets, six frets, seven frets. So if you were feeling really adventurous, you could plop your capo on the top four strings on the seventh fret, like that. This is not one that I ever do, by the way, but let's give it a try and see if it works. Oh, that's nice. Ah, lovely. Oh, it works great, actually. <laughs> Another one for the list. Then, if you put your seventh cap, your cap on the top four strings, seventh fret, play D major using the open A string as your root note. That's actually an A chord. Play G major as your chord four, as you normally would. And for chord five, if you make an A seven shape, 
but then add your ring you have to add your ring finger to block out the A string which is going to ring in the chord otherwise it should be an E chord so you definitely don't want an A note in it that's going to sound horrible but if you make what looks like an A7 chord all the way up here and then add your ring finger on the 11th fret and then play all the strings really nice E7 chord so that's great So yeah, that kind of thing of thinking about how many frets you'd need to transpose some other shape in order to be in the right key, and then working out whether there's any root notes you can capitalise on. If you play about with that, you'll probably find loads of different things you can do this with, loads of other keys. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you can play about with is flipping the capo the other way up so that you've got the top couple of strings ringing. Um, this is not one I've played with very much, I must say, because I like big low ringing bass notes on the guitar. But if you were playing along with, um, in a in a setting, maybe you've got a bassist playing with you, or in a more arranged setting where you want your guitar to be more tinkly and less bassy, less present, maybe you've got another guitarist who's doing the main chords and you want to fill out the top end or something like that, you might find applications for this. So potentially if you were playing in A major, for example, you could capo up to the 5th, leave the top E string uncovered, because E sounds nice in all the chords in A major. And then play E type shapes. Something like that. Another good one for that would be, if you were playing in B Dorian, capo the um, bottom four strings like that. Hope that your capo will stay on. <laughs> um, these capos aren't really designed for doing this, I must stress. Um, they're designed for doing six strings, not four, so... But you can, you can do it. Oh, top tip for this as well, if you do find your capo pinging off, maybe um, try putting a little blob of blue tack under the bottom of the capo arm so that it's kind of extending further, if you see what I mean. Anyway, if you were playing in B Dorian, um, you could play a really nice E minor um, E minor seven shape, which would sound now like B minor seven. see there I'm getting all these chords I'm getting most of the chord scale by just moving two fingers about so for that one I'm doing an E minor chord for the first one or just lazy E minor 7 which is actually nicer and then I'm doing um, middle finger on the second fret of the bottom string related to the uh, capo and um, ring finger on the second fret of the uh, of the G string so that's my second chord my third chord is that slid up two frets oh uh, that slid up two frets with the index with the middle finger moved down one so so the middle fingers three fi three frets above the capo and the ring fingers four frets above the capo and then my four chord is that last shape moved up two frets, so it's on the 12th. And then my five chord is the um, shape where they're both on the same fret, with them both on the 14th fret. So. That kind of thing. So that's really nice as well. Um, so yeah, there is an almost infinite array of possibilities for this. And if you mess about for long enough, you'll stumble on loads of them. Um, cool. That's definitely everything I wanted to say on this. I've discovered discovered two new ones as well as <laughs> showing you the ones I wanted to show you. Um, anyone got any questions or thoughts or um, want to buy a guitar? Because I've got absolutely loads of them. Or... Um, 
Uh, got any topics you'd like me to talk about in future? Or uh, anything at all? Any other any other business? Thanks to Mark McGlellan for your comment, by the way. Sorry, I didn't, uh, didn't acknowledge it. But yeah, no, great, thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it and uh, tune in again. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I, think I, might, I might go and have some dinner then. Want to make my left thumb more stretchy? Ah, uh, just just get it on the rack. That's that's the answer. Just uh, <laughs> yeah. Just keep basically just keep practicing the D with the thumb shape as much as you can, um, and get used to it. a good thing to practice as well with with the thumb thing. If you find it hard to get those thumb chords like that one. Um, practice going from the correct the correct position where you imagine that someone's got like a watch you've got a watch there and I've kind of tied a bit of string around it and pulled it that way um, that's the, the best position with your thumb right in the middle on the back like that my thumb is blue by the way because I spray painted myself a new sign for the, the front of the shop the other day and I got paint all over my hands, so um, this is why my nails are metallic blue at the moment. Um, yeah, so your your blue thumb should be in the middle on the back, but then, yeah, when you want to practice changing between that and these kind of thumb chords, you need to get used to that movement of doing that really quickly. And ideally, um, if you practice changing from E, e minor with your thumb in the right in the right place. Making sure there's a gap as well. There should be a gap there. You know, you should be able to put a paintbrush in there if you wanted to or something. Um, so you can tr practice changing between that and then flicking to your D F sharp chord and then flicking back. And the thing to remember when you're doing that is don't do what I kind of just did and do that. You don't want to be like changing your shoulder position or kind of waggling your arm out like a chicken. Or anything like that because that's going to make the whole movement take a lot longer and it's also going to knacker your shoulders up so uh, if you can practice getting that as a smooth move Practice making that movement as smooth and as as much from the wrist and not from the shoulder or the elbow as possible. That kind of thing. Um, cool. If uh, if no one else has got any particular questions about anything, I think I'll leave it there and go make some dinner. So, uh, yeah, thank you all very much for tuning in. As ever, I'll be back on Friday. Tomorrow, there's um, a video coming out at half past 12, as usual, which is, this week, it's a really nice chord scale for the key of A major, which is my favourite folk key. Um, so it's um, covering... of chords and they're all those ones I played apart from the last one are going to be in that video tomorrow so check that out um, I'll be back uh, next Friday same time half past five and
and um, yeah, I'll see you all then. <laughs> Cheers all, bye bye.